David Lovejoy with KGNC News Radio. I'm here with Jerry Morales. He's seeking the bench in the Potter County Court at Law Number Two in this year's primary election. Welcome, Mr. Morales. Thank you, Mr. Lovejoy. Now let's get right into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, again, my name is Jerry Morales. I am born and raised here in Amarillo, Texas. I went uh, to Caprock High School and graduated there in 2001. Went on to uh, Texas Tech. Actually, I went on to Amarillo College for a year and a half, and then went on to Texas Tech. Uh, after Tech, I graduated um, in 2005, went on to uh, the University of Texas for law school, graduated in 2008. Stayed in Austin for almost a year. Um, my, wife, my wife and I are both from here, so we decided to move back. Uh, we were we had our second child at that point and uh, decided to hang my shingle, so to, so to speak, and, and uh, started a law practice in 2009 back, back at home here in Amarillo. Um, since then, I've operated a uh, primarily family and criminal law practice, um, representing individuals in various matters all over the Texas Panhandle, um, primarily here in Amarillo, of course. Uh, but you know, I've, uh, I've taken um, CPS matters, um, divorces, uh, suit affecting parent-child relationship, custody cases, and um, any level of criminal case from class A misdemeanor to a double enhance habitual offender um, felony, which is the 25 to life punishment range. Wow. <clears throat> so uh, tell us why you're seeking this position. Well, I'm seeking this position because I think that um, my experience um, being from Amarillo and um, actually uh, doing the type of law that this court hears is, is critical for who's going to be on the bench. Um, uh, my opponents are great men. Um, they have great experience. But I'm I'm the only candidate that's um, experienced in representing individuals of Amarillo in these types of cases, in family law cases, or in, in criminal matters. Um, and, and so I, I know you know the the very important aspects of, of uh, the way family law cases go. You know, for example, if you know I've had like um, <clears throat> I've had fathers in my in my office, you know, in tears because they haven't had seen their child in a couple years. Or, or um, you know, spouses that are um, afraid to get out of a, a, an abusive relationship, um, and you know, knowing the dynamics of how these cases go, and, and and the you know the everyday situations that happen to these individuals, I think is paramount. And you want to judge with that kind of perspective. I think I really bring the broadest perspective out of the candidates seeking this office, and I think that um, I could really do a service to this uh, court and and to. Potter County as a whole. Um, I'd like to implement a few things and, and, and make some changes to the court to do that. Now, and on that point, if you <coughs> win this position, what's the one thing or things you like to do starting day one? Okay. Uh, one thing right off the top of my head uh, that I know I can do regardless of whether I have any cooperation would be something simple, but I think very important. Creating an online calendaring system. Right now, we have nine courts in, that cover the Amarillo area that hear Class B misdemeanors or above, and not a single one has an online calendaring system. And and, and where I think that's important is to expedite things. Um, you know, the commissioner's court's currently looking at a, a project that could exceed two million dollars a year uh, for a personal. I mean, uh, for a public defender's office. <clears throat> now, um, you. you the defense bar gets sometimes uh, some negative credit on that, or um, and that's a lot because the, you know I, I believe some of the commissioners have been told by their constituents that their defense attorneys aren't going to hold of them. Well, that is part of the problem, but another problem is is court availability, and sometimes you know as a, there's a lot of defense attorneys that don't have any assistance. I've been blessed to have two assistants. Um, but even at that, sometimes I'll have my paralegal and I'll, I'll call her and I'll tell her, hey, look, call the court and call them. She said, Jerry, I've called the court four or five, six times. I'll call her for the last three or four days. We haven't got a call back. And it doesn't happen in all the courts and it doesn't happen that, that frequently. But there's times when you try to make an attempt to call the court to get a setting. And especially at this level of a court, at a misdemeanor court, because there's a lot of times where the county attorney's office feels that it's appropriate that the individual... Uh, should get probation or a time served offer. That means that they're sitting in jail with the ability to get out. All they have to do is get in front of the court. And so you need to be able to facilitate that. Well, if a defense attorney doesn't have a secretary to call and bug the court you know, constantly, he might call three or four times and, and he might slip his mind. All of a sudden a week goes by and this guy's still, or, or a woman's still sitting in jail. 
and it um, it's a problem. It's problematic. I'd like to, uh, and it creates more transparency. I mean, <clears throat> to be completely honest with you, this this is a public public information anyway. But these court these judges they get paid well, and um, I think to sit in a court and not and not be available, um, you know, at least eight to five is is doing a disservice to the community. Um, I like. The court. I'd like the, the public to be able to see what's going on in the court. Now, sure, there be weeks whenever we have to schedule, you know, a jury week so that the whole day is available and there might be less going on in the court. But that doesn't mean that the public shouldn't be allowed to see it. I think the public should be able to see, hey, well, what's going on in the court, just in case they want to know. And and or a defense attorney can go online, click a button, and request a setting. End of the day, it's approved, it's denied, but that way it gets done right then and there, and we don't have to sit, in, you know, have to have any unnecessary waste. Um, so that's one thing that I think can make a significant impact, especially uh, for cost of the county. Another thing, and <clears throat> I would need a little bit of help from the county attorney's office, but I would like to create a veterans doctorate and a mental health doctorate. And essentially what that would be it would be a shortened pretrial diversion program, maybe about six months, mm -hmm. and uh, to help these individuals that are in hard transitions of their lives, um, you know, that maybe don't, their situation doesn't necessarily warrant a conviction, you know, maybe it's a nonviolent offense, maybe they're a first time offender. You know, let's utilize the services that we have at the VA or the services we have at Texas Panhandle Centers or, or any number one of these service providers and create them, you know, a shorter um, avenue to getting this taken care of as opposed to doing a lengthy 15 month pretrial diversion or something that, that we have done typically. I'd like to be able to put these individuals on a different docket because they are in different situations and, and I think we do owe that to our service members as well. Um, Finally, I'd like to um, create a implement a system where the prosecutor's office is allowed to have some say in what length of probation. Uh, currently, in court one and court two, it's not traditional for the um, prosecutors to give you a recommendation as the length of probation. It's just something that's set by the judge. Uh, the prosecutors and the defense attorneys are the ones that are looking at the facts of the case every, uh, you know, for every file, and. What the judge generally sees is in black and white. You don't necessarily see all the facts. So I think it's very appropriate for the, the people that are doing the work to be able to make a recommendation. And, I, and I'd like to re-implement that, and I think that we could get you know better results if we did it that way. Um, but those are the three things that I'd like to do. Great, great. Well, Mr. Morales, of course, is running for the bench in Potter County Court at Law Number 2. Of course, early voting is going on right now, the March 6th primary. Uh, it's coming up fast, so good luck in your campaign, man, and thank you for coming and hanging out with us here at KGNC. Thank you so much, Mr. Lowe. Joey, it's my pleasure.